Iniciar. Okay, now that you've got your Zoom session going, what you want to do is find this Zoom menu bar, and we're looking for this green share icon. When you click it, it will ask you what you want to share. Whoops, mine, someone got it. That's all right. <laughs> sure, I'll stop them. <laughs> okay. Before someone clicks on it, notice what screen you're sharing. It's usually this first one you want to share, and that's your total desktop. So if you change applications, they'll all show up on Zoom. If you pick something, like if I just picked this one where I'm showing our um, Canvas site, if I close that, that window would go blank because it's only gonna show that one Chrome application. So pick that first one if they still got it. We'll kick them off. Oh, look at all those cute hearts. Is everybody annotating? Are you all learning your annotation skills? Do you find annotate? Mess up his display. How do you mess up the display? Where are you annotating? <laughs> can you find it? Let me get rid of this so I can show you. You get pink everywhere. Did you find it? Now, under your view options up here is where you have those options if you're not finding how to do the annotation. You could also request, <laughs> requesting remote control would be like taking over my computer. So I'd probably say no, but you could ask if you wanted to, but that's all right. And then what's zoom ratio? Can you zoom in on the screen? Oh, look, you can. So if you're not being able to see what I'm projecting, you can increase the size. I don't, I think that's new couldn't do that before so pretty cool now what's side-by-side -side mode try it now we've got the screen that's being shared and if we had webcams for all of you to see all your faces over here on the side that would be awesome <laughs> okay so i'm going to go back to my now i'm going to turn off the side-by-side -side option i just wanted to see what it was like okay so someone when you're annotating is it, it's the stamps, isn't it, that are doing the little hearts? Yep. Oh, so cute. <laughs> now, <laughs> last, <laughs> last semester, I didn't turn it off for a really long time because everybody really had a fun time with the annotation. Now, yeah. one person in the class who must have been super ADHD because he couldn't just stand just listening to me. He had to be on the screen and like plopping arrows and all the important <laughs> things that I said and stuff. <laughs> So I didn't mind because it was like, yeah, it's keeping him busy. He obviously could do like seven things at once because he was always on top of stuff. But then at the very end, someone else bribed him, so I had to turn it off. But he was just doing a great job of highlighting all the important things on the screen. If somebody couldn't find something, he'd have like 57 arrows coming at it and stuff. So you can be helpful with it. It, it really is kind of neat. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, can you guys clear? Or is do, does it let everybody do that? Clear. Everyone click clear. Everybody click clear. Try to draw something and see if we can clear it before they get it drawn. Somebody draw. Can't all be clearing. So you could be you could be super annoying. <laughs> And just clear each other's stuff. And then at the end, if you loved all the annotations and artwork you guys have created, you could save it at the very end if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> now the chat, let's open the chat. In the, it's down at the, well, for me, it's down at the bottom with that menu that yes. auto shows. Oh, yeah. I can't. Do you see it? Now, when the chat's open, you guys can communicate with each I'm other. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> 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 I 
all that good stuff. <laughs> now, were there to be awful, untoward things in the chat, I would just save it at the end of class and take it to the powers and be oh. and say, oh, look at this from my class. And they would say, no. So be nice in the chat. <laughs> now. <laughs> no. No dueling. <laughs> <laughs> what I miss, I can go look. Oh, she knows oh how to my it. goodness! Oh my goodness! So yeah, be careful with that. Um, I think that's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys have explored the outer possibilities of Zoom, and that you know pretty much its capabilities here. So. Last time, we had people that were trying to present. Who was that? It was you guys? No, back. In the back? Back, there. back in the back? It's not, it's not back here. Somewhere. So probably. I just remember the ones that had the vegetables on their screen. Did you two go? Uh, I did mine. OK, I knew we had just barely gotten started, but I was like, oh, no. <laughs> It's like a the way. It's like a it's like a mean thing. It's like it's like it's like you know the way. Isn't that like I walk alone? <laughs> One of those kinds of things. Okay, so we're going to let our people in the back. Ethan needs to take over this screen. Yeah. Yeah. So let's release it and let him take it over. <laughs> Not letting you. She's gonna kick you. And oh. it's gonna be funny. Okay. Ah, no. <laughs> now you should be able to. Hurry. <laughs> we have screen grabbers. Now I know I've given you guys all of these awful ways to communicate with each other with Discord and the chat and everything. So remember you're grown ups. Do I need to turn the chat off on this presentation? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how to shut it off, but I think you guys are going to teach me. <laughs> Somebody's going to show you. Somebody's getting some you. Are you going to find out? Okay, quit chat and let's be nice and give these guys our attention. Okay. Shut off your monitor if you need to, to pay attention, because, you know, I would have to do that. I always start out presentations thinking, I am so going to pay attention. I'm not going to fall asleep. I'm going to watch every bit of this. And then the monitor starts calling me like, you could just check your email real quick. You could just check that one search that you were wanting to do real quick. And before I know it, I'm not paying any attention at all. I'm just working on it. So, okay, go for it, guys. All right, so this is Isaac. He uh, lost. He uh, used to be able to do a really quick post. 
and uh, he says he doesn't know his career science because he wants to associate with uh, career science and he wants to drink those. And uh, uh, Isaac has his time as well, so he wants to get to drink those. He's also working on a column project in Girl Cats, and he has a lot of experience. I can't tell if Tori is crying or puking. Uh, Give him a hand. Yay. Did you, see? Did you see all those amazing, amazing images with that terrible network we were having? <laughs> I need to in there fast. Okay, and then Nico's going to wait till next time because his partner is not here. So let's go over to you guys. Are you all set? Sean and Jonathan? Took him what? <laughs> I was thinking it took him three days to shave it. Crazy. Give him a hand. Yay. Okay, let's hear about Sean. Yeah, is he sure? <laughs> You like make money? Huh? Do you make money? Really? Just on Twitch? Huh? On Twitch or? No, no. There is a couple of accounts you can just make art and stuff. Well, that's just amazing. Now you two were gone last time, right? So I'm going to ask you two to get together via email or whatever over the weekend. Okay, so you were here. All right, so you wait, sorry, in the corner, and we'll see if there's somebody else. But you two are ready to go then? And you can stay where you are if you want to. Just have you both stand up. Hey, Thomas. Over here. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He just wants to learn how to use Python. <laughs> like, French, he arrived in the U.S. three weeks ago. He likes cars and cool. Neat. Give him a hand, Jay. So are you from, from France or had you been there visiting? Or what? Are you from France? Yes, sir. Neat. Well, we're glad you're here. All right. So James and Josh. Or wait, he needs to do him, doesn't he? Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm getting carried away here. Let's get this done. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's this is uh, John Erickson, but uh, he goes by a gender. Uh, his major is uh, computer information science, and uh, he wants to, to learn Python and later uh, Java or C++. He, he likes 
baby building, but more importantly, like the Final Fantasy VII, and uh, it is a uh, its own computer. Mm. Nice. Okay, guys, go for it. <clears throat> Jeff Ford, he is the guy next to me. Yes. Uh, he's going for CIS. He wants to do full stack. He wants to like web dev. Uh, he wants to learn more about the programming basics and like new programs to use. Uh, he's a triplet, which took about two months ago. He's the one in the middle. I know it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that's it. He just said, yay. You always wonder about triplets and stuff if they have to share the brain. <laughs> Burn. I think he's got it though. I think he can handle it. Nice. Right, so this is uh, James Baldwin. Also Hi, James. Um, he's going for CIS and he wants to get into robotics after that. And he's taking his class to learn basic coding. And uh, he had a car crash a while ago, and he used his bottom two mat to make a custom PC. So, uh, <laughs> little 2080 Ti. All right, rest in peace, Pacific SI, but I love this computer. <laughs> it looks very so, nice. Under the sink, you under the, the large precision tool of an i9 9 9 k Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he spent all his car crash money, didn't he? Less than more than half of it. <laughs> So Very I got pretty. Three times in like two weeks. And I was like, I'm tired of playing bumper cars with a nice car. So I just bought a really crappy car for $2,000. Yeah. Nice. That was a good plan, actually. Give him a hand. Yay. And then, were you going last time? Me? Mm -hmm. No, I was here. You were here. Who did you meet? Who did you work with? Okay, and so he's absent. That's that's what I thought. <laughs> we'll see, because someone did drop. So if he dropped, we'll just yeah. So he might have. He might have, because there was one that dropped. So we'll see, and we'll figure out something. So don't worry about it. We'll get it all fixed. Okay, and then down here, let's see. We got Daniel in your partner's month. So we'll see. You guys ready? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Do I have your question? Oh. Just here. Oh, yeah, that was the one who was going full time with his job, wasn't he? Um, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he must have got that full time to do some work. I'm trying to move this because I want to get it to slideshow, but this thing could share. No, no, no. I would already share. Yeah, it. but it's over the thing. Oh, sometimes it's just too hard to find it. Or did you guys see that special effect? <laughs> this. <laughs> Transition. This is Jacob Johnson. Hey, Jacob. I picked the flowers because he knew one older ago and he talked about some flowers he found in his backyard earlier. They're called old ladies. What ladies? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I believe they're naked. What naked ladies? His ideal career is computer coding, and his uh, was that mine? Nope, that was me. Sorry. Okay. Um, his major is uh, computer information science. And then he wishes to learn the fundamentals, fun, fun, fundamentals of programming. Oh yeah, next one. He lived in a military base outside Naples for a couple of years. Uh, 
Naplesville. Sorry, I'm trying not to look at the screen. Uh, and he was approximately five years old when he moved there. Uh, he was born with me. No, my. Hold on. Me. I was trying to say the word. Melatonin. I almost said graham cracker instead of programming earlier. He's, he was born with meconium aspiration, which is when the infant's air passages are blocked and their lungs become entrained. And that's the end. No fun. Give him a hand. Yay. Okay, let's hear about Rebecca. In the long <laughs> Do you see it? It's a good picture. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. So, this is Rebecca Skibo. Hi, it's Skibo. Skibo is Hannah. Um, so, it will, this presentation will be all white background, don't worry, nothing fancy. Um, so our education goal is for her major, computer science, information science. Her career is accounting. And the number one thing she wants to learn is how to program. Uh, interesting things about her is she has chimerism, where she has two full sets of people's genes in one box. DNA. Yeah. So, as with the cat having two different colors, she has two different facial features. One side more rounded, one side more blocky. Um, also, she used to have blue eyes, and apparently when she hit puberty, she her eyes turned orange. Yep. Have them like the ones too. And that's it. Pretty cool. Thank you. Okay, Blake and Shirley are at. You guys are moving right through it. That's what we want to do. Oh, Ooh, pretty. So our major is computer information science. So her career is computer IT. And the number one thing she wants to learn from this course is how to do programming. An interesting fact is she has eight children, and her favorite activity is shopping. And I get the impression your children are like grown, like you survived. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, some of them, they're still teenagers. Oh, they're, okay. There's not, not all, half of them are out, half of them are still together. Did you like have twins? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Were they all like a year apart? About a year, year and a half. That is so cool. Okay, let's hear about Blake. Give her a hand for having all those kids. Apes. Yuck. Pizza, cheesecake, and eggnog? Shouldn't she, <laughs> shouldn't she just die uh, right then? What else? Dog grease. Dog grease. She got that sugar part. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a Dang. That's a lot of sugar. <laughs> okay. Um, so she's going to be doing her while they're getting that going nico where did you play football huh? where did you play football uh, I 
Hey. Cool. Green, isn't Greenfield pretty small? <laughs> backspace to get to your beginning. Just backspace and it'll go backwards. There we go. Okay. Now, why Good job. Okay, now we're going to come over here to Jacqueline and Alexander. I think you guys have the longest names. We have just this front row here. Nice go, my hand. Okay. Oh my gosh. I like that little PowerPoint template. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Uh, it kind of looks like Dr. That picture of Dr. Oh, yeah. the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. So nice. You guys found nice. Uh, her degree is in computer informational science. Her dream job is to be an app creator for Google, and she wants to make apps for people in need. So that's pretty cool. Uh, interesting, interestingly enough, she owns a Zelda game for every system, which <laughs> is incredible. Every single one. <laughs> uh, her favorites include Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker. I have Wind Waker for GameCube. That's it. That was fast. Okay, it was a nice template thing. You know, I think that we should just go ahead and have. Why don't you just go ahead and dump it here and let's just get down And then we'll find his introduction of you or something. <laughs> we just won't know about you. This person that was over here. <laughs> they used to be here. His name was John. He was here, but now he's gone. <laughs> he said cybersecurity, and I found the crustiest JPEG I could. <laughs> Uh, what is the one thing once again for the past automation of boring tasks? I left an own personal message on the side of it. Same. Same. Oh, 
going in. What do you for fun gardening? And I hate large PNGs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's and <laughs> it was like two, three times the size of that when I originally put it on here. <laughs> and that's unfortunately that's it. scaled down. <laughs> uh, okay, give John a hand. Give him a hand for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> what John told us. Yeah, what John told us before he left was I thought was really nice that he came up and told me that he might be dropping because he currently is a part-time cybersecurity guy, yeah. and his company was considering off making him full-time, and so he wasn't going to have time for our class if he was just going to go ahead and do that well, job. Right? Yeah, he won't be able to automate that for a while. He'll have to sign up for an online class or an iPad class or something. So that's where he went. He didn't not like us. He just was thinking that it would be better to do his full time job. Something about supporting his family. And, okay. Oh, <laughs> you know, how much are you going to leave behind? By Okay, screen two. That's the one I want to share. What about our needs, John? Exactly. <laughs> you leave us with a hole. All right. So I'm trying, I've got. This screen here mm -hmm. should look just like your Zoom screen. Mm -hmm. And they switched things on me this semester from last mm -hmm. semester. So, so if you're ever staring at this orange one and I'm talking like you can see something else, <laughs> let me know because it's probably not where you can see it. So I want the Zoom session and the projector to kind of be the same. So sometimes I fail. All right, perfect. We are ready. We're going to start on our first chapter stuff. If you click on your modules and scroll down just a little bit to our week one, so we started at 1.30, so we should have plenty of time. See what's going on here, make sure we can get through everything today. We did lose um, some of our time because of those network problems last time. Not like, not what we like. Now, does everything seem like all better or is it still really slow to it's a little better yeah. it's a little better it's not taking you 20 minutes to save things so um, it was pretty quiet pretty quick or if you moved computers though you could go back to a really slow login so don't be surprised if you go to a computer you haven't logged on before um i'm going to start out with our week one stuff and i'm going to look at this chapter one instructor powerpoint now the other two here that are posted are from the textbook, and I'm just going to leave them out there for you guys to look at on your own. You can look at them as you read through the material, um, whatever you like to do. Remember chapter zero is the way back historical computing stuff that's just out there for your information. And then chapter one is the first chapter that we're starting on. So I'm going to grab this one that is the instructor PowerPoint, and I'm going to go ahead and download it. Now, when you're working on Canvas and you're looking at PowerPoints, Canvas will let you scroll through it, but it won't show you like any sort of animations. It's super slow. And it, it's is it terrible. super slow? Yeah. So, I mean, some of the, most of the ones that I've created do have animations because I want you to, you know, I want to point out things to you that you're going to see on different slides. So, you might want to go ahead and download them and just run them in PowerPoint. Um, that's what I do with them because Canvas just kind of brutalizes them. Up here in Canvas, when you click on it, right above it, then you'll have a link to download it if you want to. Okay. But I'm having trouble. Our annotator. I knew if I told you guys about it, I would have a new annotator, which I wanted. <laughs> Oh, Do you see it? Okay. I on okay, so we're going to try this here. It's showing it in the right place. Is this what you guys are seeing? You're not seeing the presenter view with the small slide area. Okay, good. Yesterday they were seeing the wrong one. So, an in introduction. A lot of you have already had an introduction to programming. I know that some of you may have had 
two years of programming in high school already. Some of you may be pretty good developers already. It's kind of an interesting situation right now in our field that with our intro class, we can end up with people who have never done anything before. And we can also end up in the same class with people who have been making money as a programmer since they were 12 or something. So help each other. We do have a wide variety of knowledge and skills. It's always going to be that way. The people that know more about it, you've already seen in your classes, while other people are getting extra help and trying to get up to the point you are, you might have to find something interesting to work on on your own, like expand your abilities. If we're working on a program, you might try adding additional features to it while some of the others are figuring out some of their problems so that you can keep yourself busy and learning without that in, um, affecting you. So the big thing about programming or software development is we're problem solving, right? That's why we built computers in the very first place was to solve problems. The first computers were built for accountants, right? Because accountants and money counters and things like that, they just did that redundant math over and over and over again. And it was so simple that it just took up all their time. And so, you know, as far back as the Chinese days, people thought there ought to be a better way. You know, we should be able to do this automatically. So that's really where it came from, is motivated by accounting and money counting. But first of all, when we're programming, we have to have a problem to solve. Now, if you're doing some game programming, you might not see it as problem solving, but the cycle is still the same. What do you want to accomplish? You can't just jump in and start coding a game and get anywhere unless you have an idea of where you want to go when you start. So we always say, whenever we're problem solving, and this is outside of computers, this is just, I have a problem, how do I solve it? We always kind of go through these steps. So first, we have to understand our problem. So if you're broke and you're overdrawn, you understand that problem, right? Don't have enough money. So you have a pretty basic understanding. But if you're working with somebody else to help them solve a problem, you might not have that understanding right away unless you talk to them and kind of figure things out. So once we understand the problem, we can start coming up with a plan, right? So if I'm overdrawn, I'm gonna be figuring out how I can get some extra money. You know, maybe I could mow a yard, right? Probably not me. I could teach an extra class. I could do something like that, some sort of plan. Now again, if we're working with, for or with another person, we're gonna be working with them to design, devise this plan. What's, what's gonna work for you? Could we try this? Do you think this would be a good idea? And then after we've come up with a plan, we're going to communicate that to other people. The stakeholders are anybody who's affected by this problem. So, you know, we could be talking about people that live on our street or any sort of group of people could be our stakeholders. So after we've communicated with everybody, we're ready to actually execute that plan that we came up with. Once we've executed the plan, we're pretty well done other than analyzing our results. Did it work? Did it solve the problem? And we know what our results were. So this is a step-by-step -step way of solving a problem. And we always just have to break it down. Sometimes, I know I have some friends who are, you say, a little dramatic. Have you ever known anybody like that that just loves the drama? And so when they have a problem, they're just so excited because they could just tell everybody about it and they could escalate it into a great big problem. They don't want to solve that problem. So those kind of people are harder to help. All right, in your textbook, as you get started with chapter one, you're gonna see one of the concepts that they want you to really understand is an algorithm. Whenever we say the term algorithm, we are just talking about step-by-step -step instructions. So that, those step-by-step -step instructions could be how to solve an algebra problem, um, how to do anything, basically. Here on the board here, I have an algorithm that describes the steps to take to get from OTC to my neighborhood. So when I leave OTC, my algorithm is, I'm gonna leave OTC heading south on Sherman. Sherman is that middle one, right? And I'm gonna be heading south on it, and I'm gonna turn left on Trafficway. 
I'm going to merge on the Chestnut Expressway when it hits it, and then I'm going to turn right on Barnes. I'm going to take Barnes down to Cherry and turn left, and then I'm going to be pretty much in my neighborhood. Now, I want you to look at the person beside you. You guys might have to get together, and they're going to have three here and three here. And I want you to write down the algorithm for how to get to your neighborhood. Now, some people might have to look at Google Maps to decide yeah. how to get to their neighborhood. That's okay. Just remember, don't use the Google Maps instruction. It's your algorithm. I want you to really think about it. What would you say if you were trying to tell somebody how to get to your neighborhood? So we you write it down really fast and explain it to the person beside you, and then we're going to see if they think they would be able to get to your neighborhood based on your instructions. So we're talking about via car? Via yes, via car. Probably okay. car. But if you usually you travel on a bus, you could do bus. Okay. Whatever vehicle would be the best. Okay, I'm just going to set this for about five minutes. It's not a huge thing. I want you to write it down, yeah. So ask for a piece of paper if you need to. Because when we write things down, somehow it makes it a little bit more permanent. Yeah, some of you that live really far away. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew I'd do a little bit. I don't know how to keep software living in my own world. You got a lot of steps. Oh. I have legitimately like 10 steps in 44 minutes. You have like three steps. Okay. I can believe that's only a little bit. Right now. <laughs> Does Zoom have to be kept open? Oh, we do? No, we do have to be in the middle. You don't have to write this down. Yeah, write it down. It just seems like it's harder for us to write it down. Because it's too easy for some people to want to write it down. Because we don't do much writing in the front of us, guys, right? Oh, one thing we want. I don't even write, so that's why I like to write it because it does feel real awkward. What? Are you? Oh, that makes me feel like I'm sorry.
someone to tell. an hour and a half or something <laughs> are you eight minutes that's pretty close that's good yours is pretty easy <laughs> You guys look around and see if there's somebody who hasn't given their algorithm to anybody and ask them to tell you. And behind you, see if he's told anybody. He has. Okay, good. You've got a chance. I don't want anyone to feel left out. Thank you, you guys. I saw yours. Looks like you're five blocks away. <laughs> <laughs> the first semester I did this, it really surprised me how many people had to look at the map to figure out how to get home. And then I was like, well, I just use your phones, you know, and they don't even know. But it just cracked me up. Uh, yeah, it's got some of those roads, you just never know what they are. But I really seriously have had a lot of people that don't know. You know, they would not be able to get home if their phone didn't tell them how to get there, which seems like a worry. <laughs> okay, how's your partner do? Did they do pretty good? Would you be able to find their neighborhood? Was it pretty crappy? I have no idea. Pretty good. Pretty good. Use them at Google kind of helps there, doesn't it? And get it right. But that's all an algorithm is. It's step. Step by step. Now I gotta tell you guys a funny story. It's sort of funny. I don't know if it's really funny. And I probably shouldn't tell you, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. It's the first time I did this. I was surprised at how many people had to look at the map. You guys aren't here, that's all right. We 
they were in the doing. And then the second time, I told everybody how to get all the way to my house. And the student in my class was like, I live right down the street from you. And he was really nice and friendly. I really liked him to talk so much. Well, then later in the semester, we got to the point where we did something with our phones. And he came in like three weeks later and he said, ever since you made me saw that on my phone, the OTC network has taken over my phone. And everything I do on my phone shows up at OTC and the other way around. And I was like, I don't think that level of software has been invented yet. I really don't think that's possible. And he was like, you're watching me. And he went to my boss and he was like, she's changing my homework and doing stuff. And I was like, oh my God. We had to call a lot of people. It was a really big deal. It was really bad. I got home. I told my husband about it. And I was like, you know, the worst thing. And my husband was like, guy's crazy. And I like, yes. Like, he knows exactly where we live. Because I told him at least I were and he was right down the street. So we had to kind of watch the house for a little while and everything was okay. Hopefully he was all right. I think he got some help. But you know, I don't know what they call that. Um, schizophrenic. He was definitely. Did they ever figure it out? I think they knew he was schizophrenic already. I mean, so there was a Maybe he had to sense he was sober. Maybe he had to watch the classroom and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was he was sick. <laughs> Maybe he had multiple personality disorder, and that's why in some parts he was, you know, really yeah. nice, and then the other he yeah. was like, ah! Went <laughs> Well, I case met him, and sure enough, he had had, um, he was under the custody of a caregiver. Oh. So I knew that that was a real issue. So um, don't get that mad at me. If you think that's up, I've done something to you, come tell me. And I promise I didn't. Okay, so a program is just a list of instructions. And when we create those instructions, we're programming, right? That's all there is to it. We're just writing the instructions for the system to follow. So it's pretty easy. Why doesn't everyone do it? Let's check. This video is getting a little old, but I'd still like for you to see it. Now, let's see if I can get some volume. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was eight years old. I was in the sixth grade. I learned to code in college, freshman year, first semester, um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program that played tic tac toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had somebody come up and say, Hello world. And it made I mean, a computer do that. It was just astonishing. Learning how to program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. You stop the world, right? Program. And then basically just add a little bit to it. And then when you learn something new, I looked it up, either a book or on the internet, and then added a little bit to it. It's really not unlike kind of playing an instrument or something, or, or, you know, or playing a sport. It starts out being very intimidating, but you kind of get the hang of it over time. Coding is something that can be learned. And um, I know it can be intimidating, and a lot of things are intimidating. But, uh, you know, what isn't? A lot of the coding that people do is actually fairly simple. Um, it's it's more about the process of breaking down problems than uh, you know sort of coming up with complicated algorithms as people to think about it. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You need to be determined. Addition, subtraction. Uh, that that's about it. You should probably know your multiplication tables. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to code. Do you have to be a genius to read? Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball. Um, or, uh, you know, build a house. And it, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. What it is is, you know, computers are, are everywhere. You want to work in agriculture? <laughs> Do you want to work in entertainment? Do you want to work in manufacturing? It's, it's just all over. <laughs> Here we are, 2013. We all depend on technology to communicate, to make information, 
and none of us know how to read and write code. When I was at school, I was in this after school group called the Whiz Kids, and people found out, they laughed at me, and you know, all these things. And I'm like, man, I don't care. I think it's cool, and you know, I'm learning a lot, and some of my friends have jobs. Our policy is literally to hire as many talented engineers as we can find. The whole limit in the system is just that there just aren't enough people who are trained and have these skills today. To get the very best people, we try to make the office as awesome as possible. One of these is Val, their offices. There, this one. <laughs> I guess you would have figured it out, huh? You're a fantastic chef. Free food. Free laundry, snacks, even places to play, video games, and scooters. There's all these kind of interesting things uh, around the office, places where people can play or relax um, or go to think or play music or be creative. Whether you're trying to make a lot of money or whether you just want to change the world, computer programming is an incredibly empowering skill to learn. I think if someone had told me that software is really about humanity, that it's really about helping people by using computer technology, it would have changed my outlook a lot earlier. To be able to actually come up with an idea and then see it in your hands and then be able to press a button and have it be in millions of people's hands. I mean, I think we're the first generation in the world that's really ever had that kind of experience. Just to think that when you can start something and do your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is it's just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. The programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You know, you're going to look like you have magic powers compared to everybody else. It's amazing. It's, I think it's the closest thing we have to a superpower. Great coders are today's rock stars. That's it. Okay, look at these statistics because this is from a few, few years ago. So, it pretty much. There's all sorts of different versions of it out there. Now, code.org, if you're not familiar with it, back when this video was produced, our previous president had just declared a state of emergency in our country because we don't have enough software developers. And you guys probably are aware of some of the things that have happened since then. I want to be when you grow up, Olivia. Um, Stop, fashion. little girl. I want to be a fashion designer. A basketball player. I want to be a... Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to be a fashion so, designer. Uh, 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 so since then, since he declared that emergency, we may have had um, our voting system to pass. Via software, right? Since then, mm -hmm. we've probably had a few other issues, and we know we've had lots of things that we don't hear about. So I think he was right. We did not have enough software developers in our country. We had we were pulling people in from other countries to work here, and we needed our students to start thinking about learning to code. And so that's what all of this effort was to try to get students to start thinking about it and then it's worked. You guys have done some coding in high school, a lot of you have. We've got that stuff pushed down to where people are getting a chance to learn it earlier. So that was an important thing. We still have a huge need. We still have like this guy who left for full-time cybersecurity. You know, cybersecurity is a big issue and we do need software development in our country so that we can create, it was like, so that we can create software to check them, right? I mean, it's just only fair. Hopefully, our lab will have quantum computing and then we'll, really, we'll really need people to make quantum computing. Yes, yes. And you know, I mean, there's always those other people that are going to tell you, oh, you don't need to learn how to program, but pretty soon computers are going to program themselves. Well, I will tell you why I was told that when I got out of college and it was a really long time ago. 
and I made a whole bunch of money. Time. So don't listen to them. <laughs> Someone's going to have to teach those computers to program themselves, right? right? And they're not doing it yet. So. And even then, those computers might have programming issues that we have to fix. Exactly. And like, is it Will I Am that said, the programmers will be the wizards of tomorrow. Right. And if, was it? Was, yeah, I can remember who said it. But I think that's true because as we get more and more of that attitude of you don't need to learn it, the computer knows how to do it itself. We'll have fewer and fewer people that know how, and so it will become something that's even harder. Computers are going to get harder at that point. Like, it's not right. that we don't need it; it's so that we're going to need better people to work. Better and better people, and really, things are much more complicated mm -hmm. now than they were just a few years ago because we keep developing stronger, better algorithms that are more complicated. You know, facial recognition, things like that, that never existed just a few years ago, are a lot more complicated. So, you guys have, if you want to go into software development. You have a huge future ahead of you. And we actually have, oh, what that was, was that a Python? We have a lot of, <laughs> it goes internal. It's a turtle. We have a lot of opportunities in Springfield, which we didn't used to have. So that's pretty cool. Go, what have I done to it? Yeah, it's not on the right place. There it goes. All right. So when we're doing software development, we have to worry about that problem-solving approach. But we're going to see that software development is a cyclical thing. It's in a cycle. And you can even think about windows as you look at this. First of all, we start out, we've identified a problem. We're going to start out by analyzing the problem, designing a solution, just like that basic problem-solving scenario. Then we're going to code our programs or systems or whatever we need to code. Then we're going to test and revise as we need it. Then we're going to wait until more problems come up. So think about Windows. Windows 10 comes out. As soon as it comes out, Microsoft starts finding out about all sorts of problems. They start making a list and then they'll go through this whole cycle again to release another release of Windows. And so we see this happen over and over. You guys have seen it with games, with all sorts of different things, that we have this program development cycle. We're really never done, because no matter what, there's gonna always be room for improvement or correction or fixing of bugs, so that's good. We're gonna start with um, looking at pseudocode. Pseudocode is not real code, it's pseudo. And pseudo is something that's not quite real, but it, it looks realish. So pseudocode is basically English-like so that we can share it with each other. And it's just a plan of what the steps of our program are going to be. Here's some pseudocode. This pseudocode is to make a cup of tea. And I found it online, and it must be from Europe because they organize with an S. But I'm going to start out by organizing everything together. I'm going to plug in the kettle, put the tea bag in a cup, put water into the kettle, wait for the kettle to boil, add water to the cup, remove the tea bag with a spoon or a fork. Important for me to not stick my fingers in that hot water, right? <laughs> add milk and or sugar and serve. So we could use that algorithm over and over or that pseudocode. <laughs> Somebody lost it. Now, right there at eight, could this program require input? When we look at this pseudocode and we know that it's eventually going to be a program, is there a spot there where we might want to ask something of the user? How much milk or sugar? Or do they want milk or sugar? How many um, tea bags? It doesn't put tea bags, it doesn't say put eight tea bags or something. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think our milk and sugar is a really good place to ask for input. So we could, we could ask the user, we could ask how many tea bags they wanted, if they wanted it super hot, we could ask them all sorts of questions. So whenever we ask for input like that, we need to save that input somewhere in memory so that we can refer to it later to see what they said. So we're going to use a variable. And a variable is just a named location in memory. So if we ask how many sugars, we could save whatever they replied 
into a variable. So if we were going to use a variable, a little name, location, and memory to hold their answer, what would be a good name for that variable in our program? We could call it sugar. Would numb <laughs> sugars be better? Yeah. Yeah. It would be more reasonable to somebody else. But there's no hard and fast rule. We want a variable name to be descriptive of what's going to be held in that variable. Not too long, but not too short. Kind of make enough sense to let everybody know what we're using that for. Uh -huh. Just a quick question. So, um, you know, you're talking about, you know, putting in, you know, short versions for things. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are, I know that in some writing of the programs, you know, if you put in, like, you know, the question, you know, and symbol and the hashtag and then it becomes a good thing. Um, but say I was actually, you know, mm -hmm. I use the num hashtag as for a to me at least a number. Uh -huh. So if I were to put like hashtag sugars, meaning the number of sugars, would that good question. Could she do that? Let's look at our rules that? for variable naming and see. Because if we look at variable naming rules, these apply to almost every programming language. They use pretty much the same rules for variable naming. So it can only be one word, no spaces. It can't begin with a number. Can we, can we have special characters like that hashtag? Not usually. So we wouldn't be able to begin it like that. Some languages will let us use special characters like that, but usually never at the beginning of our variable name. Yeah. So we can't have it start with a number. It should be meaningful. So let's look at some. Is that valid? No. no. Why not? It is because it's all connected, isn't it? Right. Why? By that underscore. The underscore connects it. So if that were a space, it wouldn't be valid. But since it is, I'm going to turn it green a couple of ways. What about this one? No. no, that one's missing that underscore, so it's not good. What about this one? Yeah. Looks good. How about that? No. No, no. why not? Can't, Can't do that. How about that? Yes. No. Yes. Is it legal? Yes. Is it good? No. But it is legal, so it's questionable, and we made it yellow. You could use it, it's fine, but it wouldn't tell people very much about what was going on in that data. What about that? No. Wait, yes, yes. We should be fine, right? Again, is it good? No. no. <laughs> it might be. It depends on your company. You know, if your company knows what a Z is, that might be have something that has a lot of meaning to your company, but probably not. So it's questionable. What about this one? No. No, why not? Space. And what about that? No. Why? Very good. What about that? No. So we could use it, but programmers that came after us might wish that we hadn't because it is so long. Okay. Now a constant is a special kind of variable, and when we use a constant, it holds data that doesn't change, like maybe the value of pi. So that value is never gonna change. When I'm writing a program, my code, it's preferred that I use a constant variable like this over just having this number down somewhere in my code. So I would rather set up a constant that has the value of pi than just have a multiplication by 3.14 somewhere down in my code. We wanna stay away from that. Another thing that might be a good example of a constant would be like our area code. If we, if we went to another city, then the area code might change. But if our business was in Springfield and we just wanted to keep track of our area code, we could have that variable that was a constant and never changed. Maybe you could do area code one, area code two. <laughs> yeah, you could do all sorts of different things if you wanted. So this is some pseudocode that we're going to write. And I want to wait until next time to get started on it so that we can start at the beginning and not run out of time. So I'm going to stop this thing here and we'll come back to it next time.
and I'm going to jump around a little bit. Sorry, but we we lost so much time. Oh, you played the good. Yep, you guys will have a kahoot next week about your presentations. So try to remember who said what. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we let's take a look at our assignments. You guys have done the introduction of fear. I'm going to put your scores in if they're not already there. The reorder of pseudocode. Wait till Tuesday, and we'll do that together, okay? Don't worry about that on your own. These next two, do worry about on your own. So let's start with these chapter one review questions. Click on that, and let's see what happens. Where, where you click on it, or you just click on it? No, if you click on it too. Okay. Now, this is using an Office 365 form. It works really well, but it can be really confusing and it can definitely cause you guys some trouble. It's not it's a lot of letting you view it. It's now, if it's not letting you view it, you've got to sign in to Office 365. If it's not asking you to sign in, you can click on Office 365 over here on the side and it'll, it'll present you the sign in information. Just use your OTC account. Your username at otc.edu and your OTC password. Do you see it? Sorry, I'm just trying to get It's coming up for everybody. It is a little slow. So if you work on these at home, you'll have to log in again using your OTC account. So the way this Excel form works, if, let me get back to it here. This is so weird and I know it's just a problem for everybody, but when you start typing your answers, it's gonna save them all right here. So let's do it, let's type our names. Where are you at? I'm looking at that actual form in that assignment, that week one, chapter one review questions assignment. Sorry, I'm a little You're fine. I'm jumping around everywhere. See it? Okay, so we just enter your name. I just like Skylar's a rare name, so I didn't name. And after you enter your name, I want you to close this assignment. So I'm just gonna go back home and it says, Are you sure? And I'm gonna say yes, I wanna leave. Right. And now I want to go back to that assignment and see if it saved my name. And it did. So don't submit until you're all done. That seems weird, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't find it. Okay. I'll go back and give everybody another chance and untime it because okay. it shouldn't be timed. And there was trouble with that video. Okay. So I'll just undo them. And, or I'll just, what I'll do is I'll give you another chance. So if you don't want to take it again, you don't have to. But if you want to, you can. That's okay. I'll just I'll just go in there and give you another chance, okay. so you can just take it again. But yeah, I had trouble with those videos. Chapter one is huge. Chapter one is huge. So we're in our Prelude to Programming book, and looking at chapter one. Pull your book out. Yeah, pull your book out. And they've. 
there. I can still see it. Now I want to start out at the very beginning. Um, the questions come from the back of the book. So if you look at the assignment, all it says is answer question number two. It does not repeat the question for you. So you have to go to your book. And I'm looking here at the online version. And I'm going to go to the very end of chapter one. If you look at the side of your book, those color, there's some colored pages. Like, like you can look right here. Oh. See how there's colored pages? Mm -hmm. And those are the dividers between your different chapters. So if you go right to that colored page, you should be at those questions. They're not colored on this, though. Do we have access to the online book as well? No, and I don't know why with this one. It's just, it's a different pub publisher. Do what? My oh, it didn't. Yeah, but the brand new was probably like an extra hundred, two hundred dollars. Yeah. Because then you technically have two books. Mm -hmm. Yep. True. It's all coming together in my head yeah. now. Yeah. And you might look online, and you might be able to get an online version of this one for a lot cheaper directly from the library. Rather. Yeah. Either way, it's fine. It's just harder to find things. Okay, so when I'm here looking at the end, I'm going to go to the review exercises right after the chapter summary. Page 61. How did you get there? I'm so sorry. Page 61. No, no, no. No. She touched the screen. She does her online version of the book. I have oh, online we don't have that. Access. You don't have it. Yep. So you just have your old hard food and coffee. Yeah, that's what okay, so I'm going to go to the review exercises. That's where I am. Okay. And here are the questions that it's referring to at the end of your chapter. So if I look at the, the question, it says, um, answer question number one. So I uh, see question number one says, a computer blank is a list of instructions to be executed by the computer to accomplish a task. What is that? Algorithm. Okay. You might say program too. I would take either one. Algorithm is right. What about number two? The general process of designing a suitable computer program to solve a given problem is known as the program development cycle. Yep. Now, every semester I tell everybody, you can just close out. It will save your answers. Every semester everybody gets so stressed out that they don't believe me. That's okay. I understand. So if you want to, as you get into these, you can write them all down on a piece of paper and then just come in here and put them all in if that makes you feel better. I have a lot of people that like to do it that way. But I swear, it will save your answers for you. Once you've got every question answered, then you're going to come to the very bottom and click submit. You should get an email telling you that it got submitted. So save that email so that if you get worried about it, you can go back and look. Because it's not going to handle it very well in Canvas. It's just kind of a weird way of doing it. And also, you, if you submit something, um, because uh, I was in this last year, uh -huh. um, where I actually I hit submit, but then realized I submitted a completely blank, and my teacher was like, I'm getting things, mm -hmm. and realized you can actually submit more than once. Right, you can submit again, you can submit right. over yeah. and over and over, but you don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Please don't. Please. Are you submission about something you want? He's being smart, Alex. <laughs> My name's Alex. Oh, I love oh, so he's a teacher. Yeah. Good job. 
Is the online book a necessity or? No, okay. no, no, that's just the only book I have. So just like you guys only have the hard copy, I only have the online. Okay, because mine has the access code, and if since the access code isn't needed, if we have a physical book, don't scratch it off because uh, it makes the book either worthless or very, very low price. Oh, less on your yeah. selling yeah. it back? Sell it back. So yeah. you still have the code, so you can probably get access to the online. Yeah, and I only have to pay like 40 bucks for this thing. But. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. I'd like for you to stay and kind of be going through your book answering questions. This is the Tuesday night. We have lots of fun. We'll be back again before it's due. We'll be trying to get started on the search. Did everybody get signed in? Are you with anybody not with? Oh, I have Oh, I have Yeah. Oh, she's going to put it on here. I don't know. Just something about the It's a computer control. So some of their are going to put it in. It's totally up. I am so excited Sure, yes, you can. I need to end our session.